Hello everybody and welcome to this project on k-means clustering for imagery analysis presented by EDUonix. Today we're going to take a look at k-means clustering, an unsupervised learning method, and use it in a slightly different way to do a classification task. So this is going to be interesting and it's going to cover some areas of machine learning that we haven't really looked at yet so far. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal. I'm going to be using Jupyter Notebooks as always. Let me get over to my tutorial directory, and then if I just type JupyterLab, this is going to open up the newer JupyterLab version of Jupyter Notebooks, just like we have been doing in the other projects. So we'll wait for this to pop up, and then we'll talk a little bit about this project. We are going to be doing imagery analysis. Specifically, we want to be classifying the 28 by 28 pixel images from the MNIST data set. So we'll take a little look at the MNIST data set and what that contains as soon as this notebook ends up opening. So here we go. It's opened up over here. So here I <clears throat> excuse me. Here I have a K means notebook already opened up. It's called K means it's blank nothing in it yet so far I am going to be using Python 2.7 just to verify that we are using the same Python versions we don't necessarily need the same library versions however it's always a good idea to keep these up to date furthermore by importing these at the start we're going to be able to check that we do have these installed correctly So let's go ahead and print out the, the version numbers. This will tell us that we're on the same page or not on the same page. And this is, this is an important step as well because as time goes on, some of these packages might be deprecated or become replaced by other, other versions. And so if it's been a while since this tutorial has been produced, there might be some issues with the, with the code and the different different libraries that are that are being used. So here's the matplotlib. We'll be using that for some of our graphs today. We'll have some really cool graphs. And we're also using numpy for some computational um, tasks as well as handling our arrays. And I went ahead and imported this as MP already using that namespace, so that's why that's down there. So let's go ahead and print these off, make sure that these all import correctly. One other thing that we will be using is Keras, actually, and we're not gonna be using Keras to deploy a deep learning model like we have done in previous projects. However, Keras provides a very convenient way to import the MNIST data set, and that's actually what we're gonna be using it for. Everybody here should already have this Keras library installed since we have used it in other projects. However, if you don't, it's as simple as pip install Keras or conda install Keras in the terminal. And so we can directly import MNIST from Keras. If you have TensorFlow installed, you can also do this from TensorFlow. Otherwise, you're going to have to download it from here at the MNIST data database page and you can get these GZ files right from here. This, this page also has some really cool results on here. It shows different algorithms that have been deployed on this data set and the results that they were able to achieve and the paper that that was obtained in as well. And as you can see, this has been studied time and time again. The MNIST data set is kind of a uh, benchmark data set in the machine learning community, especially for deep networks as well. But we are going with the clustering today. So from Keras.datasets, import MNIST. And then once we have that, we can simply import the X train, Y train, X test, Y test data sets straight from this using some Keras functions.
So we just type mnist.load underscore data. We have some parentheses on there since this is a function. And this will load the mnist data for us. So once again, this is just a much easier and much more convenient way to get the mnist data set into Python. This is the only time we're going to be using Keras today. If you don't have Keras, you don't want to install it for some, some reason like that, you could get them from this page as well, except extracting them is going to be a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's run this, make sure that went correct. This is going to give us some warnings, but really like it doesn't matter which backend we're using. Some of these things are being fixed in the most recent version of H5Py. If you check the Stack Overflow, they're, they're fixing it right, time, right at this time. <clears throat> in fact, in the development version, this, this error here has already been fixed. So we'll let that, that go. This is loading the data. It might take a little bit longer the first time you run this. However, as soon as you do have that, it'll use a locally cached version of the MNIST data set. There we go. Mine's, mine's come in here correctly. And see, next time it's a little bit quicker. Let's print out some of the information for this. So let's do training data, just so we know that we have the entire data set, what we're working with. Let's do format xtrain.shape. Let's print out the shape there. Let's also print out the training labels. See what these look like. So we will get those. Let's print these. So training data, we have 60,000 28 by 28 pixel images. And for each of those, we have an associated label. So we're going to visualize some of these in a second here with matplotlib, specifically pyplot. Um, let's take a look at our testing data really quick first, though. So we'll do xtest.shape, and let's also print out the testing labels. This is just a good way to verify that we have what we think we have. Additionally, it's, it's going to be important to understand the structure of these data sets because we're going to actually have to reshape some of these as we use them for k-means clustering. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. That is going to be one of the major reshaping or pre-processing steps that we're going to have to do for these images. All right, so there we go. We have 10,000 testing images, 28 by 28 as well, 10,000 associated labels for those images. So in this, process, in this project, we are going to be pre-processing these images for clustering. Um, typically, in the past, we have worked with two-dimensional data or, or Cartesian data, XY data points for k-means clustering. That's not going to be the case today since we have these 28 by 28 pixels. So we'll look at how to handle high-dimensional data with k-means clustering. Also, what does it mean to have high-dimensional data and what the cluster centroids are going to look like with that 28 by 28 pixel image. So we'll look at visualizing high dimensional cluster centroids as well. We'll take a little look at some common metrics for evaluating cluster performance, and it, of course, deploying these k-mean clustering algorithms on this MNIST data set. All right, so let's keep going. I am going to re-import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. We are going to be using this for displaying our images today. Also, we need a Python magic function here, and that's going to be the matplotlib inline. So we have matplotlib inline, and this is just simply going to tell Jupyter Notebooks display these plots right here in the notebook. So we'll go ahead and click Shift Enter on that. All right, we're good to go there. I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger. If you do Control B, or excuse me, there we go. Control B will minimize this, uh, the directory on the side here, give us a little bit more room to work with in this Jupyter Labs. This is a more typical Jupyter Notebook type setup. All right, here we go. Let's display some of these first images. So we'll create a figure with three by three subplots using matplotlib. 
pyplot. So we just want to take a look at these images. We know what we're actually trying to classify here, a cluster. It's always a good idea to have a, an in-depth understanding of the data that you are working with. So we'll do subplots. We want three by three. And I'm going to set a figure size just so that these display a little bit more nicely in our notebook here. I'm also going to do plt.gray. These are going to be black and white images. So we'll tell plt that. Now we have to loop through each of these, each of these subplots. And we're going to add the image to each one. We have to flatten these so that we can loop through it with a single index. So we'll have flat on our axis. So we'll show one of these. Mat show. This is just a binary mat. Here we go. Dot axis. Let's set these off. We don't need tick marks since these are images. Let's go ahead and set the title as well just to make sure our labels are working appropriately. Let's get the, the labels for each image in there as well. All right, so here's our for loop going through these, but we still actually have to display the figure. We are just adding images to, this, to these right now. We haven't actually displayed it. So let's do figure.show. This will bring this up. All right, so let's go ahead and run this, see if we've got everything correct. And here we do. And so this error here, this is actually uh, what we are fixing with this matplotlib inline. I'm not sure why it's still coming up. Let's see. There we go. It's, it's better this time. So here's our first nine images from the MNIST data set. You can see these are all handwritten digits as expected, 28 pixels by 28 pixels. And the labels are the correct integers. So we can obviously tell that 5, 0, 4, 1, et cetera. So we got a couple ones here, threes, some twos. These all look pretty good. And uh, as you guys can imagine, I know my handwriting isn't the best. Some of these are very poorly written. So we can take a look at some of these other ones. Maybe let's just do like 100 plus I. Explore these a little bit. Feel free to use different numbers. Look at whatever ones you want. Like here we have a five. This is... <laughs> We're missing part of the tail here, but this is still going to have to get classified as a five. So one thing to note before we really dive into this here is that deep neural networks have been able to classify the MNIST data sets with error rates in the hundredth of a percentage point, 0.999% so accuracy on a on this data set. We are not going to obtain anything near to that with k-means clustering today. However, we are going to be looking at some other valuable aspects of the k-means clustering, such as how to handle high dimensional data. So if you wanted to do a classification, a strictly classification task on images, it would typically be better to use a deep neural network. However, there's still a lot that we can learn by approaching this with a clustering algorithm. All right, so let's keep going. We're going to have to pre-process these for the k-means clustering algorithm. The major pre-processing step that we are going to have to do is to reshape these into one-dimensional arrays. Right now these are two-dimensional arrays. They're 28 by 28. And so we need to convert those to one dimension using NumPy's built-in reshape functionality. Um, so typically with k-means clustering we've looked at XY coordinates, that would be a one dimensional array with length two. Ours is going to end up being a one dimensional array with length 784, 28 by 28. We're going to flatten out all of these um, different pixels into a 1D array. So let's go ahead and do that. Pre processing the images. We're also going to normalize these images. That's going to be another step that we take. So the first one we want, convert each image to one, to one dimensional array. So we can do that pretty easily. We'll just do x train 
dot reshape and this is the numpy reshape since our xtrain is stored as a numpy array right now or matrix we can use this and we'll do length xtrain and then we'll simply use a negative one here if we just put an integer NumPy will reshape it into a one-dimensional array with the length of this integer. If we use a negative one, it'll automatically calculate what that length will be. In this case, it's going to be that 28 by 28. So it's going to end up being that 784 length of vector that we wanted to have. So there's that. Our Y, let's just store the Y train. We don't have to process those at all because those are already a nice one-dimensional vector of length 10,000 or 60,000 depending on the tr training or testing data set. So there's that. Let's uh, let's actually go ahead and run this and then print out some of these shapes. Let's print x.shape, see what this is. And there we have it. We have that 60,000 length 784 instead of the 28 by 28 that we had for the x train previously. So now all of these images have been flattened into that one dimensional array. The entire data set, however, still has two dimensions. It's got the 60,000, so the index of each image, and then the image itself, or the array, as I'll be calling it from now on, since it's really not an image anymore. We'll just call it a one-dimensional array. That, this is how our data is going to get passed to the clustering algorithm. All right, that was just a little tidbit. Let's cut that out right here. Go back up here. We need to normalize the data. To 0 to 1. Right now, this is an image. If we printed out perhaps x of 0, so here we see our array. These go from 0 to 255, as most standard images do. So most of these are 0. We're going to normalize them to 0 to 1. Right now, these are just integer values. So we can just divide by 255 to do that. We're also going to have to recast this as a float value so that we can get decimal values here. 255. And right now, this 255 is an integer. If I just put a period, this will tell this to be a float as well. So now we're dividing an x, which is going to be turned into a float, divided by a float. And this will be normalized to that 0 to 1 range. Let's go ahead and just verify that. That will print the x shape again, and let's print off this x zero dot shape. And finally, let's print off the x zero itself. Make sure that that got normalized correctly. So if we do that, we see yes, just like we saw before, sixty thousand one dimensional array of length seven hundred and eighty four. That first image has that same array shape. And here we go. Here is our normalized image. We have decimal values. These are all floats as denoted by the period here after these numbers, all within the range of 0 to 1. So looks good. Looks good. Let's go ahead and not print this out. Just to save some space in our notebook so we don't clutter our notebook with unnecessary information. All right. Let's get going. So this is really all the pre-processing steps that we need to take for these images. So we can really go ahead and dive right into the k-means clustering. So let's start out with a simple case here. First, we need to import our algorithms. We're going to be using the scikit-learn package. So we say from sklearn.cluster. These will bring in all the clustering algorithms. We're going to import the mini batch K means. So this is exactly the same as the K means clustering algorithms we've used in the past. However, it's going to use mini batches to actually solve and fit the training data much quicker than it would otherwise. And this is going to be really important. We have 60,000 images in our training data set. So this is going to save us a lot of time at the cost of very little accuracy. All right. So number of digits, let's get this really quick. We'll do length mp.unique y test. So find all the unique values in the testing data set and the length of that. Let's print out the number of digits. This is going to give us 10, 0 through 9. 
but we'll just double check that. Then let's initialize the k-means model. And so to do that, we simply type k-means. You could call this whatever you want. This is just going to be a variable here. And then we add to it this instance of the mini batch k-means. We're going to set the number of clusters here. We're going to set the number of clusters to the number of digits. So let's have that. And then finally, all we have to do to fit the model to the training data is type k-means, which is our instance right here, dot fit. And we're going to pass it just the x data. So the beauty of clustering is that it is an unsupervised learning method. So we don't even need the labels to these values yet. <clears throat> we are going to just fit directly to the x data here. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will think for a second. It won't take too long. However, we're also going to print out the number of digits here. Should give us 10. In fact, it does. So there we go. And we're already fit. So it didn't take long at all due to the mini batch k-means. It gives you some information here, such as batch size 100, its initialization methods. The initialization is going to be really important on some of these clustering algorithms. Um, one thing to note as well is that we didn't really set a random state. So you might get some slightly different answers or accuracy percentages in this project than I will just because it's kind of hard to control the way these initialize and each time you run them it's going to get slightly different results. We could change the max iter iterations here that could have some impact as well. However, we'll leave it as it is for now. So let's take a look at some of the results that we have gotten so far. If we type k-means.labels we'll see some of these labels and here we go. This is going to be, let's do a dot shape, see how many. So we have 60,000 labels here, which makes sense. We had 60,000 images. If we print off the first 20, looks like we have some different values here. But it right now would be an easy step to uh, say, all right, sweet, looks good, and move on. But these actually aren't what you think they are. Maybe you've used k-means a lot in the past and you know. But this is simply referring to the clusters that each of these groups of images have been assigned to. So this, for example, doesn't mean that our, our first image was the integer 4. It simply means that it was assigned to the fourth cluster. This one, the ninth cluster. This one over here was assigned to the first cluster. This doesn't necessarily mean that this is an integer one. Again, this is an unsupervised learning algorithm, so it doesn't know what these clusters are supposed to represent. It has not made any claims of that nature yet. So we are actually going to have to write some of our own functions, and these are going to assign cluster labels to each of these clusters. So we want to find out, all right, is cluster four referring to all the integer six? Let's assign it to be a six. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to need two functions here. The first is going to be called infer cluster labels. And we're going to pass to it our k-means algorithm and the actual labels, the integer values, the y that we had up here. So let's write a little bit about this so we know what this function is doing. It's, good, it's always a good practice to write what your function does. So this is going to associate, or associate most probable label with each cluster in k-means model. Also, it's going to return dictionary of clusters assigned to each label. Because actually, what might end up happening if we use more clusters than the number of digits, we're going to get multiple clusters referring to a single integer. So that's why we're going to keep this as a dictionary here. All right, first things first, we're going to build a blank dictionary. So inferred labels equals brackets, the brackets here denoting that this is a dictionary in Python. Okay, there's that. 
And now we can say for i in range k means dot number of clusters. So loop through the clusters. Let's go ahead and first things first, scroll down here, will be to find the index of points in cluster. So labels have an empty list here. Index is going to be equal to mp. So numpy dot where k means dot labels is equal to i. So we want all of the points that have been assigned to this particular cluster. Then we're going to append actual labels for each point in cluster. To do that, we can simply type labels.append actual labels and use these index, this list of indexes that we just generated. All right, so now what we have is for each cluster, we have a list of all of the points that are in that cluster. And now we have added all of the actual labels for those points to this list called labels. So we have a list, all the actual labels. Let's find out what the most common label is. This is actually how we're going to assign or infer the cluster labels, is we're simply going to assign it the most common label that occurs in its cluster. So determine most common label. And we're going to add in um, some functionality here. But basically, we're going to have counts equals count np dot squeeze labels so this np dot squeeze maybe if I add in another cell here we can explore this a little bit so if we have an array equals np dot ones let's make it a shape one dot three oh I need to have some extra parentheses here there we go if we print array dot shape we see it's got a link or two dimensions here, length one, and then a length three, three columns, one row. If we do the MP dot squeeze of this array, we see that we reduce one of those dimensions. If we have a dot shape here, now we just have a length three. So this is dropping excessive dimensions. And then the bin counts is just going to tell you the bin counts for all of the integers that you have in there. So there we go. There's that. Has that in there as well. This is the shape. We don't need the shape. It needs ints. We'll add in uh, int 64 here. We'll get this eventually. We'll do a UN8. Anyways, it doesn't like this. There we go. So here's our bin count. This is simply saying we have zero zeros, three ones. If we had higher integers in here, we would expand this bin count all the way out. That's simply what this is doing. So creating a bin count for all of the label values that have been assigned to each cluster. Just in case we have a length of labels, length one, we're actually going to have to add in a if statement here. So if length labels equals zero, or the first index equals one, we don't need the squeeze function. So we're just going to do mp.binCount labels zero, else we'll do this np dot squeeze this will avoid some errors here as later as we get into a higher number of clusters all right so there's that we have our bin counts what we can then do is assign the cluster to a value in the inferred labels dictionary so if np dot argmax argument max so this is going to return the integer value 
for the maximum bin counts in inferred labels. So if it, if it already exists in the dictionary, we're going to append the new number to the existing array at this slot, or at this key, we'll say. Inferred labels, np.argmax counts dot append i. So we'll append the cluster label there. Else, what we can do is create a new key, create a new array for this key. Inferred labels, np.argmax counts. It's going to be equal to i, and we'll make this a list so that we all have lists here that we can append to. All right, so there we go. There's that. We are going to return this dictionary from this. So inferred labels, let's return that. And then we can move on to our next function. This is going to be infer data labels. So this is going to use this dictionary that we just generated. It's going to take x labels and then the cluster labels as well to determine what each point was predicted as. So let's write that here. Say determines label for each array, that 784 length array, depending on the cluster it has been assigned to. Returns predicted labels for each array. And remember when I'm saying array here, I'm referring to our one dimensional images that 784 length array. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. This one's not gonna be as long. Let's generate an empty array of length X and we'll assign the labels to this. So we simply have a NumPy array here, fill it with zeros, and we're gonna make it the length of X labels we're also going to have to do it an as type np uint 8. So there we go, just an empty list of predicted labels. And then we can assign actual values to this when we loop through it. So for i cluster in enumerate, we should spell this right here. Enumerate, there we go, x labels. So looping through the clusters, for key value in cluster labels.items. So now going through our dictionary, if cluster in value, so the cluster that the point was assigned to is in this uh, dictionary under the value, which is the list of the clusters for each integer we are going to sign predicted labels at that index to be that key. All right, so there's that. And then we can return this as well. Say return predicted labels. All right, so here we've got our two functions. This is what we're gonna use to convert these array labels, these cluster labels into actual integer labels. So this is how we're gonna use the actual k-means clustering algorithm for this classification task. So let's run this. We didn't actually call these functions yet, but let's actually just go ahead and test them, make sure that they're working correctly. So let's test the infer cluster labels and infer data labels. as well. So let's call these, we'll have cluster labels here equals infer cluster labels and we'll pass to it the k-means algorithm. Remember we already fit this k-means up here. So this has been fit to the x data and we'll pass it y, the actual labels. 
And this is going to give us our dictionary back. So cluster labels is now a dictionary of the labels for each cluster. Let's predict cluster labels for x here. This is, we could really use the k-means.labels for these as well. But this is just a good way to look at the predicting cl cluster labels with the k-means algorithm. So we have predicted labels here now. Predicted labels is going to be equal to the infer data labels, x clusters, and then pass to it our dictionary cluster labels. Let's go ahead and print these out here. So we'll print predicted labels. Let's print the first 20. Let's go ahead and print the actual labels, see how we're doing. All right. So let's go ahead and run this, see if everything works. And it looks like we probably have some typos up above. And indeed, we do. We need this to be plural here. There we go. X labels. Oh, accidental entered. So run this again, fix that error, come down here. Much better. All right, so here we go. These are actually going to be the actual integer labels now for all of these. So it looks like we do have some errors. And this first one, if we come up back above here, we actually looked at a few of these. So let's get rid of this 100 here. Look at the first ones. So that first one is indeed a 5. So we're mislabeling that, that first one so far. So you have all of these, but it looks like we're, we're matching up pretty good. A couple errors, but the main thing is that our inferred data labels and our inferred cluster labels is working appropriately. If we want to explore this a little bit um, more, we can actually go back here and add some print statements. And I think this is going to be worthwhile just so we understand what these are doing. Print labels, and let's also print cluster, cluster label. We'll do label dot format i mp dot argmax counts. So we'll have those print out. Let's go ahead and run this again. And so now we actually see that these are labeling things. So cluster five gets the label seven, cluster four gets the label three, and so on and so on. Okay, so there's that. These don't actually need this as much. Some of these, though, you see that you've got a lot of different values. So these are all the labels for the points that were assigned to this cluster. This one looks like it got mainly sixes, and it's only showing us a couple points here. But you see some of these have different labels. So obviously, we've got some errors in here. It looks like this one's all one. The four eights and nines and some fives even getting assigned to the same cluster. The two zeros and ones, sixes are doing pretty well. But we have improvements to be made. And indeed, those errors are reflected in our predicted integer, integer labels. All right, but we can actually move on to optimizing and evaluating the clustering algorithm. But we're going to go ahead and do that in the next video what we're going to be looking at specifically is at varying the number of clusters that we use and how that impacts the performance of this k-means clustering algorithm so stay tuned for that and we'll keep going and keep getting better results thanks for listening